Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Hannah Renee and it is so nice to meet you. And if you like healthy lifestyle content from a married working college student, that's what I post on here. So today we're going to be doing 10 healthy habits that you need in your life for 2022. I used to be severely burnt out, but I put these habits into practice and I've been feeling so much better mentally and physically. So I wanted to share those with you. And without further ado, let's jump right on into this video. <coughs> Habit number one, in the morning, do not let the first thing you do be to grab your phone. Don't do it. I know you've heard it, but don't do it. I actually didn't think it affected me that much, but then I started doing it as a habit for the month of April and I had consistently been grabbing my Bible instead of my phone. And one day I grabbed my phone and read an email and it affected my whole morning. My thoughts were just racing and I didn't have a very good Jesus time because I was just thinking about this email that I got. Do whatever you gotta do to not grab your phone. If you need to put a do not disturb alarm on it so that you can't get notifications until a certain time you can do that put it across the room if you need to whatever it is just don't do it try your best i know it's hard but you can do it number two is to make your bed every day and i know it's cliche i know it is and you don't want to hear about it but making your bed makes you feel like you have your life together <laughs> also it helps you stay out of it because if you're working or needing to get stuff done then you can't get back in your bed because it's already made. So just take the two minutes to make your bed every day. You won't regret it, I promise. <laughs> Number three is to read a book. And I know not everyone is a reader. I'm definitely not the biggest reader. It's so therapeutic to read because we are constantly being consumed by media wherever we turn. Even if you're working or at school, there's probably media in the places that you're at. And it's so healthy to have your mind still be active, but to not be staring at a screen. Even if you're not a big reader, you can start by reading a page a day, a chapter a day, something small, just to get your mind active in a different way. Number four is walks. The hot girl walk trend has become my new favorite thing. I didn't think I was gonna be a walker, but here I am, I'm now a walker. It's a great thing to do if you definitely don't like intense physical exercise, which is me. And I like to walk alone or I walk with friends or my husband sometimes. When I'm walking alone, it allows me to think and do like an internal checkup with myself, figure out how I'm doing. And also I like to listen to podcasts or music, but walking with friends is fun too because you have this undivided attention with you and your friend to pay attention to each other. And there's nothing else to focus on because you're just walking. It's such a great activity, so if you have not taken up the habit of walking, please do. <laughs> Number five is weekly rest day. I have preached this so many times on my social media, but we were not created to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We just weren't created to do that. This is in fact a spiritual thing too, because in scripture it says you may have life and have it more abundantly, I don't know the reference, sorry. And in order to have that abundant life is to live in God's rest. But when you're not taking a rest day or even just a rest couple of hours, you're not giving yourself the space to experience that rest. And then you're not living more abundantly. And I definitely felt this when I was burnt out and just always working all the time. I just was not experiencing an abundant life. I was always upset and always frustrated about things and not giving myself the rest that I needed. When you're not giving yourself a rest day, you are living to work rather than living to be alive. So I highly recommend <laughs> to have a rest day. Sorry, that was super deep. <laughs> Number six is to stop working at a certain time every day. And I'm so bad at this. I'm gonna get better at it in the month of May. That's the habit I wanna build. You should be having a time in the day where you stop working, stop planning, stop doing, and just be. Be with yourself, be with people, be in nature, be with a book or wherever you wanna be. Just allow yourself to be and not have to be doing something. Our society often tells us that we have to be doers, that we're identified by our accomplishments and what we're doing. But the crazy thing about God 
is that he loves us despite what we do or don't do. He loves us even if we don't do anything for him. So let that be a part of your identity that's grained in with this healthy habit of learning how to be and not to be doing something 24 hours a day. Number seven is to take care of a living thing, like a plant or an animal, because taking care of a living thing requires you to be faithful to that living thing. It requires you to focus more on the process of your plant growing or your animal growing rather than focusing on the results which we live in a results-based society, so this is very hard for us. When I was burnt out, I would always let plants die because I just didn't have time to take care of them. But now that I live a lot slower, a lot slower pace, I actually am faithful to my plants and I wake up and I'm like, I need to water my plants. I just think it's so healthy to be able to take care of something else other than yourself. It builds consistency in you and it builds good character, trust me. Number eight is to find someone to bounce your thoughts and emotions off of. We have become such an isolated and individualistic society, especially because of COVID and everything, but we were created to live in community with one another. We cannot be alone for too long. And when I'm in my own head about something Thing, it's really hard for me to get myself out of it but then I speak it out loud to my husband or my friend Carly and then I'm like wow this is not as big as I thought it was having someone actually listen to you and listen to your feelings is so encouraging and so beneficial and then it helps you process and navigate those emotions more. I do want to give a little warning to be careful on who you share your feelings to because not everybody has your best interest in mind. We know that. We've experienced it. And a little disclaimer, if you do have mental health issues, I'm not saying that you should just talk to your friends about them. You should definitely seek professional health when it comes to mental health issues. Number nine is to exercise. And I know you don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it either because I'm not an exercise person. But moving your body is so healthy physically and mentally. One thing to keep in mind about working out is not everyone likes to work out the same way. Some people like yoga. Some people like lifting weights. Some people like walking or running. And we're all made different and we have different likes. So make sure to find a workout that you actually like and enjoy doing. Number 10 is to have a reset day for the week. You've seen my reset day video. If you haven't, go watch it because it's just so good to have a reset day for my brain at least because it helps me not to be overwhelmed by the week. But when I have a reset day, it just puts those things in <laughs> to actual time and then I'm able to figure out when everything needs to get done. What reset days look like if you're not familiar with the term planning the week, meal planning if you do that, grocery shopping, cleaning your space, decluttering, <laughs> all that stuff, cleaning your devices, and then taking care of your physical body like shaving, face masks, stuff like that, and then taking care of your internal body, like journaling and internal checkups, maybe coffee with a friend so that you can navigate those emotions like I talked about before. That's what a reset day looks like. So if you don't have one, you need to do one. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and let me know of any other video ideas you like to see from me because I love to do those for you. And I'll see you guys hopefully on Saturday. Bye guys!